All right, this is part six of my series uh, looking at Russ Miller's Facts vs. Darwin from the television program by Carl Bau called Creation in the 21st Century. Uh, this is going to be the one that I've pro that, that I, the reason I'm doing this entire series uh, really is around what I'm going to be bringing up in this particular this this video that you're watching now. Um, it it it's it's I had mentioned I think in part two that there was a statement that Miller said that was going to come back and bite him in the ass. Well, this is where the ass biting is going to begin. Louis Leakey, who's the famous father of the Leakey clan of eight men finders, discovered in 1932 a crushed lower jawbone. It had all apes' teeth. It was broken up into about 40 pieces, so he was able to reconstruct it. And guess what? It came out in the shape of a human jawbone with all apes' teeth. From his reconstruction. And thus was born Ramapithecus, the missing link. Once again, for 45 years into textbooks, went Ramapithecus, misleading tens of millions of people into rejecting Jesus Christ. But in 1977, 30 years ago, it was proven that that was the jawbone of an orangutan. Yes. Ramapithecus was discovered in 1932, but not by Louis Leakey. It was discovered by G. Edward Lewis uh, in Nepal. Uh, if you guys are probably aware, uh, Louis Leakey, the great Louis Leakey, worked in Africa um, in Olduvai Gorge, not in Nepal. Um, second thing to correct, and this is obviously mistaking several different things, but uh, the Ramapithecus jaw, which was an upper palate, the first one discovered, it consisted of an upper palate in three pieces, not 40, uh, as well as scattered teeth from other, presumably other individuals. Uh, that was what, what uh, G. Edward Lewis discovered. Um, he said that it was the most manlike of the early anthropoid jawbones found at that time. He was completely ignored in 1932. And in fact, it wasn't even seriously looked at as a potential human ancestor until the 1960s. So it wasn't like it was just immediately crowned as our missing link um, after in, in, for 30 more years. So, and so right, right there is, 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 it's just a typical sloppy scholarship, not bothering to look up the right name, um, putting it not just in this video, but he's got another video series where all these same things that are in this one are also restated in, in on his on his YouTube channel. Um, these same same bad evidences that I've been bringing up here, uh, and no correction of them, no attempt at correcting these things. Uh, the second thing is uh, with with Sivapithecus or with Romapithecus um, is that is it was never found to be the jawbone of an orangutan. Once more complete specimens were found, it was determined that the specimens called Ramapithecus really were just another species of, of another, an older genus that had been discovered in the 19th century called Sivapithecus that was thought to be in the lineage. There's a great group, a huge great ape lineage that's in the orangutan. It's kind of a clade that today the only living representative is the orangutans, but during the Miocene, there were extensive, lots of other branches in that same clade, one of which was with Sivapithecus, including the Ramapithecines. So uh, that's just outright fraud. It didn't. Nobody was deceived into human evolution by that. I mean, it's, it's a stupid thing to say. But anyway, I was going to say the point about the 40 pieces, because um, Louis Leakey, the real Louis Leakey, not the, not the confused... Conf Russ Miller's confused Lewis Leakey, but the real Lewis Leakey found an Australopithecine skull in 1960. Yeah, 19. He was discovered in 1959 and published in 1960. That was in 40 pieces, and I'm suspecting he's mixing the Australopithecine skull from a completely different continent with the Ramapithecus palate, which was in three pieces by a completely different author. So, um, and that's 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 not where it gets really fun. This is this this next clip here. Um, to, to get, Strap yourself in so you don't fall out of your chair laughing. Well, a young man studying to be a dentist gave me his advanced biology book last summer. And he said, Russ, would you look through this and pick out some frauds? Well, I don't have any place to put the frauds. I have so many. But I flipped through the book, and there was the drawing of Ramapithecus's teeth. So that caught my eye. I stopped to read it. And now they've put it back in the textbooks with a new name, saying this is Sivapithecus. And the textbooks Incredible. read that civipithecids are more closely related to humans. This genus now includes the animal formerly known as Ramapithecus. This was proven to be an orangutan 30 years ago. That is absolutely incredible. It's out and out fraud. Out and out mm -hmm. fraud. So
Now, anyone who's made it this far in my series, which I suspect is about one, um, may remember back in uh, part two uh, when Russ Miller, when he, he was discussing um, Ernst Haeckel and the the tendency for evolutionists to invent evidence. In fact, he said this here. So he did what evolutionists are famous for. He invented and what some. Was that? He invented evidence. He invented some evidence. Okay. So what he's implying there is that when we need evidence, when we don't have the, the proper evidence required to demonstrate our claim, that evolutionists often will just invent it. That's what he's saying right there. And I contrasted this with what, you know, good creationists do. Um and uh, I'm going to show this right here. Now, this is this this slayed me here. Okay, okay. Here's the graphic that uh, Russ Miller shows. Now, I want you to remember where he, the claim that he just made is that a that he was looking at he personally was looking at a textbook from an advanced biology class, and he saw this. So this is this is this isn't like he's getting this from another creationist source and then repeating maybe a potentially false claim. This is his actual first-hand experience. Um, and what he got from that textbook is civipithecids are more closely related to humans. This genus now includes the animal formerly known as Ramapithecus. So, as he claims, uh, Ramapithecus was found to be an orangutan, was removed from the textbooks, and now they snuck it back in under a different name, hoping nobody would notice. But of course, these sharp creationists out there uh, doing their research are, are noticing these things. But one of the things about this that caught my attention is the, the, the generous use of ellipses um, before civipithecids, after civipithecids, before and after humans. Um, and typically when I've seen that, experience has shown me in creatorsionist texts uh, that it's important to to look at the originals. Now I realize I I, I didn't have this uh, this edition um, on my bookshelf, which was very unfortunate. Um, I have an I think I have a second edition or first edition um, of the of this textbook that I bought years ago, uh, and I didn't have it. So I thought just for sheeps and giggles, I I sent an email to. Um, to the authors uh, and ask them specifically if I could, you know, if if they could possibly scan or get me a copy of this of this original quote from their book. And um, oh, right from the very beginning, they, I actually got responses from both authors, and um, they sent me the following uh, clip or the uh, scan of it. So actually, scans from several different editions, so I could compare them, which I thought was very very nice of them. And they, th what I got was they, uh, well, this quote here. As you, as you can see, there's a great deal more than they uh, give credit. So to illustrate the point, I took this text and I yellowed out the portion that are included on the graphic that Russ Miller provides. Uh, as you can see here, uh, what he, if you read the whole sentence, the later Cenozoic Eurasian hominoids include the dryopithecids and civipithecids Civipithecids, which are more closely related to the great apes and humans than are gibbons. Perhaps the best known of these fossil apes is Civipithecus. This genus now includes the animal formerly known as Ramapithecus. Um, by taking out what he ellipsed, the, the text that is removed from that completely changes the meaning from making the claim that Civipithecids are human ancestors, or are closely related to humans, to the, what it originally intended to say, which is that civipithecids are related to the great apes and humans closer than they are to the gibbons, okay, the lesser apes. So all great apes are related to each other as opposed to the gibbons. That's the point the authors are trying to make. Okay, I'm going to finish up this part of the video with a little bit of rant about uh, what we just saw um, because it really bothered me. It, it, it more than anything else, more than a lots of uh, other things that have been said in this series and in many other creationist series, this that particular th point really, really irritated me. Um, and there's a number of reasons why. Um, again, you know, being in contact with the textbook authors tends to make me a little bit more sympathetic towards their side of things in the first place. Um, but uh, it, it's it's all a whole lot bigger than that. The part of it is. Um, is many times I run into creationists that make claims. They'll make a claim, um, and in, if you 
if you poke at it a little bit, it turns out they're repeating a claim they read in Henry Morris, or they read in you know they read uh, they read the claim someplace, or they read it on an online website, and they're just repeating what they read, um, even even if they might actually be citing the same source that their source is citing. They didn't actually look at the original source, and there's you know, it, and I'm not saying that that's all right to do. That's a terrible thing to do. It's bad scholarship to do. Um, but at the same time, it almost seems like not as great of a crime to me as somebody who actually has first-hand knowledge of the source that they're looking at. Who's actually, if indeed Miller's claim is true, and he actually held that textbook in his hand, and he actually saw that section on Ramapithecus um, in the 2002 edition of Vertebrate Life, and he would have seen the parts of it specifically that he removed um, he would have known exactly what the if he would have read that paragraph he knew exactly what the authors meant to say um, and he deliberately took what they meant to say and made it into something different to prove his point he invented evidence to prove his point the exact thing that he's accusing evolutionists of doing the same exact thing that he says that they are you know that what they always do or they often do or whatever however he worded that He's doing exactly the same thing to promote his cause. And it is extremely... I, I, I guess I can't even understand... I don't understand who would do that. I can't get into the mind of somebody who... I mean, what... Do you have any any morals or respect or anything like that? I mean, okay... I'm an evolutionary biologist, so I'm actually an invertebrate zoologist. I've worked on the evolution of sexual reproduction. That's been my my graduate work um, in crustacea specifically. Um, but you know, and and so I know the field a bit. I've published a bit. You know, I know I know what it's like in the sciences, and I know for a fact that scientists are not in it for the money, um, at least overwhelmingly so. Um, it's not a high paying career. Uh, those of us who are in it are in it because we love the field, we love teaching, or we love research, or we love the subject matter that we're studying. We love t to do that. And I am going to take the assumption that these textbook authors um, feel the same way about what they are doing. And to to if you've ever worked on a publication, if he's ever worked on a publication, it is a lot of blood, sweat, and tears put into putting something together. And for very, very little you know, you, 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 people see the end result. They don't see what goes into it. They certainly don't appreciate the work that's involved. And so that that they can do this with the intention of being as accurate and educational and help whatever it is that they're doing. And then he can take that, delete words, and then present it as if they are actually lying. Take their very truthful statement and turn it into a lies in order to drag their name through the mud so that he can promote his Jesus is despicable to me um, is shameable to me um, it's it's absolutely disgusting and I am and by the way I've had a little bit of an just a, a, a comment exchange with him um, where he specifically asked me to I don't know if it was him or one of the people who worked for him at his at the but asking me specifically if I would send him the scan of the textbook thing, which I did, um, thinking, well, maybe he'll remove these videos that have this in it, and there's been no change whatsoever. That was two months ago. Um, so I don't think that Mr. Miller is interested in truth all in, in any capacity. Um, I'm going to take a shot in the dark that he probably didn't have this textbook originally in the first place, that he's actually probably is copying from a, a creation of source that I don't have um, who did the same thing that he's doing. But I don't know that for a fact. Maybe he had the source and he's choosing to lie about it. But either way, the point is is that he has not corrected the information. And um, I don't expect him to. Uh, I really, really don't expect him. I mean, so f to do that in the first place shows absolutely no morals.